Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have this, which is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 14 ALC6 laptop. This is the 14-inch version of the IdeaPad 3 with AMD Ryzen 5000 processors in it, uh, but this guide is very similar for the 15 and 17-inch versions, the only real difference being the number of screws in the base. So speaking of which, we have to start just by removing all the screws from the base of the machine. These are all identical size. But I will be putting them off to the side just in the arrangement that they have come out. And all the screws on here are exposed, so just in these little wells. There are no hidden ones underneath there. Uh, stickers or so on and there are a total of nine of these in the base of the machine so doing the ones on the front here this particular system is the model with the Ryzen 5 5300U so the base model uh, four gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. We're going to be upgrading this with an additional four gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for this to go out to a customer shortly. These are all just Phillips size double zero screwdriver bits that I'm using here. So standard Phillips head screws. So with those removed, we are then going to take our pry tool and we are going to begin just looking for a place to get in between the base of the machine and the palm rest. So we are going to get in around the hinge here seems our best option, just popping the base of the chassis up with that and then just gently pressing in, angling down slightly just to go around the base of the machine and start unhooking that. Right there, along the front. Then up the other side. and then simply pulling the base of the machine like so, we'll lift that off. Once we're inside, our first job is to disconnect the battery and we're going to use the pry tool to press this little raised section on the battery connector and just slide that out. Disconnecting the battery therefore just ensures that the machine is electrically off and we aren't going to accidentally power on the machine or have it running while we are working inside it. In terms of upgrade options on these machines, we have our M2 SSD here. There is a 2.5 inch SATA bay. However, because we don't have one fitted, we do not get the cable for connecting these. You can buy that cable separately to add a 2.5 inch SATA drive, but that isn't something we're covering today because I don't have one of those available. Under this shield here for EMC, we have a single SODIM. Uh, the four gigabytes of memory included with this model is soldered to the main board, but I believe if you have a eight gig model, you get a SODIM under here. We're going to install a, a module to bring this up to eight gigabytes. You can also replace the Wi-Fi card if you were wanting to upgrade this to a Wi-Fi six module. But if you are doing this, make sure Lenovo don't do a um, white listing for only their approved cards here. You do see that on some ThinkPad models. I'm not sure if they do that on these. So first of all, to do the SSD upgrade, and what we have here is a M2 2242 drive. And we are going to start by removing the screw here. So the mounting for this is standard M2 2280, but with a little bracket for fitting the shorter SSD. So we are going to Peel off this thermal pad and just carefully remove the SSD. 
I then have a crucial P2 M2 2280 drive here, and I'm going to insert that into the slot. And then refit the retention screw. We can then take this thermal pad and we're just going to place that over the center of the SSD to help with heat transfer into the back of the laptop. To access the sodium slot, we have some little uh, clips around the edge of this shield. So what we're going to do is just gently pull these outwards. These are also on the back. So we're just going to gently pull out the feet on these just to loosen the clips. And then we should be able to just lift off this shield. So getting the pry tool in just underneath it, make sure you're using a plastic pry tool. It should always be particularly on the plastics, but you certainly don't want to be gouging into the main board with a metal tool. And with that removed, we can then find our sodium slot. We are installing a four gig DDR4 3200CL22 module into here. We're going to insert that and then just press down like so. We then take the shield and carefully line that up to press back into the little clips and cover that back over like so. To replace the wireless card, we can simply lift off the two antennas and then undo the single retaining screw. This then allows us to slot out the card. I'm going to be refitting this one. So we simply slot back in, press down, refit the screw, and then the awkward bit of just reconnecting by clipping on these two small, slightly fiddly antennas, but standard fare for modern wireless cards. And with those clipped back on, that's all back in place. If we're wanting to pay some attention to the cooler, then the fan is held in with three screws. Removing this gives you access to the leading edge of the heatsink if you want to clean that, if it has got dusty. or if there has been a fan failure, of course. We're going to need to just unclip the Wi-Fi antennas again, because we need to unroute this cable as we do it. So we're going to unplug the fan. By pulling the two little sides of the fan connector, and then we can lift the fan up We need to unroot these wireless antennas. We also need to disconnect the I.O. cable to this daughter board over here by lifting this hatch and pulling the cable out, moving this out of the way. This then gives us better access to the wireless cables, which we can thread out. Gently guiding these out. Now we should be able to lift the fan. So unrooting these cables from around it. This gives us access to this front edge of the fan. If we were to want to repaste the cooler, then it's a simple case of removing these four screws and then applying fresh thermal paste to the heatsink. But as is, we're going to refit the fan 
So we will start by slotting that back into position. We're then going to just screw it down because it's going to be easier to route the cables back in with it already refitted. We then have to reroute the Wi Fi antenna. Refit the I.O. cable, so slotting that back in and then pressing down the latch, making sure the fan is reconnected because there is nothing more annoying than putting everything together and then realising you haven't plugged in the fan. And once again, reconnecting the antenna cables. To replace the battery, we have a Lenovo L20M2PF0 type battery in here, and this is held in by four screws. With the four of those removed, we can then just lift the battery out from under this bracket. And then to replace it is simply a case of refit it into position and replace the screws. So having dealt with everything, we are now safe to reconnect our battery. And we can refit the base of the machine. To do this, we're just going to line things up at the front, press down, work our way around the base, and refit the screws. I hope you found this video helpful. Please do let me know in the comments if you have and if it's let you upgrade your machine or if you have any questions. Links to the parts that I've used here are in the description below. If you found this helpful do give it a like and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.